are these people? Uh, we're we're going to talk about Spine Biden, uh, new hit show yeah, coming to. Too. No, I don't. I th- I think Universal Studios would probably come take a kneecap for that. Yeah, um, I, well, I don't think that would be one that you would play often anyway. No, although but, not the Austin Powers thing, but it's just similar. Like it has yeah, that kind of sound. Very similar. So, um, but it, you're probably wondering why why I brought every. Boomer Dad's favorite new television show, uh, Spy and Biden, here with us today. Um, because he's increasing spying on Americans. This is Kevin Gustola. Um, me and Indy last week did a pretty in depth, I think it was last week, maybe a week before last, talking about the uh, FISA expansion. So go check that out. Um, but I just wanted to bring it here as well because I find it important and just give a little bit different perspective. So we have Gastola over from the dissenter, and he writes the White House backs surveillance reauthorization that, despite a fresh record of routine abuses, expands security agency spying power. So, um, April 20th, Edward Snowden declared America lost something important today, and hardly anyone heard. The headlines of state aligned media screech and crow about the nefarious designs of your fellow citizens and the necessity of foreign wars without end but find few words for a crime against the Constitution. The NSA whistleblower was referring to the United States sentence reauthorizing expanding surveillance under Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. President Joe Biden circulated a memo that cast the Fourth Amendment right to privacy as a threat to national security. Biden National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Attorney General Merrick Garland called members of Congress to ensure that they voted to give spy agencies renewed power. Specifically, Patriot Act 2.0, as represented Zoe Lofgren called it, broadened the definition of service providers and exponentially increased the power that the government has to force numerous businesses and ind- industries to aid warrantless surveillance. Senator Ron Wyden strongly opposed the legislation and even introduced an amendment that a- would prevent this assault on civil liberty. Senate rejected his effort to protect privacy. The Senate waited until the 11th hour to ram through renewal of warrantless surveillance in the dead of night, Wyden stated. He also of added, course they did. <laughs> yep. It is clear from the votes on very popular amendments that senators were unwilling to send this bill back to the House, no matter how common sense this amendment before them. Although... The Forza Intelligence Surveillance Court, the FISC, renewed Section 702 until April 2025, allowing lawmakers plenty of time to appropriately draft and amend legislation. Panic was stirred by Biden and the national security state. Biden, who has a track record of challenging surveillance, did not mince words. He described the provision that he thought, which was dubbed to make everyone a spy provision, as one of the most dramatic and terrifying expansions of government surveillance authority in history. He said, it allows the government to force any American who installs, maintains, or repairs anything that transmit or stores communications to spy on the government's behalf. That means anyone with access access to a server, a wire, a cable box, a Wi-Fi router, or a phone, it would be secret. The Americans receiving the government's directives would be bound to silence, and there would be no court oversight. The Biden admin applauded the passage of legislation that expanded warrantless surveillance, Sullivan said. The president will swiftly sign the bill into law, ensuring that our security professionals can continue to rely on Section 702 to detect grave national security threats and use that understanding to protect the U.S. Section 702 used to primarily apply to telecommunications or technology companies now as detailed by demand progress. Section 702 may be used to force business landlords, cleaning contractors, delivery personnel, utility providers, etc. to help U.S. security agencies spy without probable cause. Entities and individuals required to help with surveillance cannot speak about it. Their First Amendment speech rights are curtailed as they violate their customers' Fourth Amendment privacy rights. Also, according to Demand Progress, House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Turner and House Intelligence Committee Ranking Member Jim Hines 
drafted the expand surveillance reauthorization without defining terms. Like, quote, any other service provider, access to equipment, or, quote, custodian. Only as a result of opposition did security hawks insert an exemption for coffee shops, hotels, and libraries. I wonder why. I'm betting because that's where they go. Um, writing about the impact on journalism for the nation, longtime national security journalist James Banford wrote, a requirement could easily be added to Section 702 that compels the need for a warrant as soon as an NSA employer or FBI agent recognizes that the communication involves a journalist conducting an interview or an attorney engaged in a conversation with a client or source. I mean, that sounds bad. Yeah. Um, in the end, Bamford argued insight gained from the American journalist's interaction with a foreign source may be far more valuable and provide considerably more insight than inhibiting sources to interact with journalists. The FBI consistently abused the surveillance power it was granted under 7702 before the authority was reauthorized, it is a certainty that the FBI was will abuse this ill-defined authority handed to them by Biden and Congress. So, um, House Speaker Mike Johnson was at one point an opponent of warrantless surveillance under FISA. He claimed that he shifted his position because the Speaker, he is privy to, quote, confidential briefings that have showed him how critical Section 702 is to national security. Ugh. So, I personally use 702 authorities that NSA Snowden responded. There's absolutely nothing in any briefing or of any level, then or now, that would justify opposition to recognizing the government's obligation to seek a warrant for searches of American communication, which are constitutionally protected. And frankly, let's be serious the NSA and FBI have plainly demonstrated that they're more than comfortable violating the law when they feel it binds to tightly 278,000 times just for one authorization. 702 millions and millions of times under others for Obama and on a literally innumerable scale under Bush, we couldn't even count it, Snowden added. So let's not pretend that in the apocryphal ticking time bomb scenario of the Hollywood imagination, the series of agencies where was I? Let's get forward. Um, okay, far. Let's get forward. No. We did that. We did that. Did that. Yep. Um, so let's not pretend that in the apocryphal ticking time bomb scenario, the Hollywood imagination that a series of agencies which have since their inception been characterized by a criminally casual respect for the Constitution would feel in the slightest way encumbered by something as parochial as the law. After all, the legislation rarely ascribes penalty for federal infractions. The House Judiciary Committee passed legislation, the, Pro the Protect Liberty and End Warrantless Surveillance Act, at the end of 2023, it would have required a warrant for any U.S. person search. However, through the House Intelligence Committee, U.S. officials thwarted attempts to constrain the national security state. Entities and individuals required to help with surveillance cannot speak about it. Their First Amendment speech rights are curtailed as they violate their customers' Fourth Amendment privacy rights. During a private meeting on reauthorization, Wired... Why is it doing that? Um... Wired reported that Turner presented an image of Americans protesting the war in Gaza while implying possible ties between the protesters and Hamas, an allegation that was used to illustrate why surveillance reform would be detrimental to national security. So they, they blamed Hamas, Colin. Don't you love that when they do that? Oh, Isn't that sure. nice? Yes. So... <laughs> uh, one, of, one of the best out there, Vanessa Beely, uh, writing, Senate Judiciary Committee probed Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, 
right? And talked about the 27, 278,000 times, right? Likely all queries were unintentional, right? But who was fired? Take seriously the fact that your institution has repeatedly abused its authority, has repeatedly targeted political opponents. Your institution is the one that went to the door of pro If you know who that is in chat, you know, let, let us know. By protesters with SWAT teams to try and intimidate people because of their speech. Your institution is the one that treated parents as domestic terrorists because of their speech. Your institution is the one that, according to the court, the FISA court, ran 278,000 unwarranted, probably illegal queries on Americans, right? That was your institution, correct? There, the, with respect to the compliance incidents, yes, some of the other things you cited, we can take them one by one. They are not compliance. You, you would characterize the unlawful querying 278,000 times of American citizens as compliance issues? We've said before, I've said that the totally unacceptable. Who's been uh, fired for it? Individuals involved uh, are handled through the disciplinary process. Who's been fired for it? We have, there, in, the, in the case of the uh, unintentional instance where something similar happened, we have fired people in the past. Wait, I, I'm Ooh. sorry, what, what, what does that word salad mean? The unintentional instance where some, <laughs> what, what does that mean? Who's been fired for the 278,000 times that you improperly or illegally queried the database for American citizens? When we Anybody? Find, when we find intentional incidents. Well, you're saying that the 278,000 queries were unintentional? I believe that's correct. Wow, 278,000 times American citizens' information was queried by your agency unintentionally? That's your testimony? I would uh, want to go back and check that, Senator. I'd like to talk uh, to my well, lawyer. My, under told me. my understanding is that the vast majority of Well, wait, the that's different. You just said it was. You just said it was unintentional. Now it's the vast majority. Um, accidents, Colin. They were unintentional lying. Unintentional. No one was fired for those for those mistakes. Um. So you know, take seriously the times, right? Um. You have anything to say? Anything to add? <sighs> you there? Internet work. Do the thing. There you go. There we go. Um, I do want to. Oh, um, I'll probably have to leave. Well, it's being crappy right now. Um, yeah. But let me leave one more time, and then okay. Back it. Yep. So uh, we continue Ooh. with the article. It is highly likely that anti-war or pro-Palestinian protest, particularly on... Welcome back. Um, there we go. Yay. Um, you were saying? Uh, all right, is it stable? I think so. It's better, at least. I think now it is, but at least for now. Um... Cool. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> like um but I mean you've brought story after story after story in the past where you know it's just it's happening already. It's just yeah trying to justify mm -hmm. their corruption by essentially looking Looking at what we're doing, and you know, and yeah, they're trying to make the justification um, because I think, especially now that things are, people are getting the information. The people are not trusting government. People are not trusting mainstream media in terms of what they're saying. So they're going to other sources. People are finding out the truth in other ways, in alternate ways, and and I think now we're beginning to see that people are willing to kind of speak out on it. So now, like, the idea is that we're trying to 
essentially pe have people shut up by being yeah. like having the idea that they're watching us. Well, um, that's the thing, right? So this article continues, and that's why I wanted to bring it, was that it's it's highly likely that anti-war or pro-Palestinian protests, particularly on college and university campuses, will be targeted. Biden right. will probably have no problem with using this expanding spying power against students, right? Which means that that's not good. The day after Biden signed the right. reauthorization and bill, go ahead. No, finish it. Oh, White House Deputy Press Secretary Andrew Bates accused student demonstrators opposed to Israel's assault on Gaza, echoing the rhetoric of terrorist organizations, right? You're seeing that that that's, they're blaming Hamas. They're saying you know anti-Semitic, right? They're uh, trying to add new legal loopholes about what anti-Semitism is in Congress. On top of this, right? So, but back in 2008, Democratic presidential candidate Barack Obama campaigned against retroactive immunity for telecommunications companies that helped Bush engage in warrantless wiretaps. He even promised to filibuster the FISA Amendments Act. But Obama voted for the bill when there were 46 different lawsuits pending against the companies and angered many progressives and civil liberties advocates. Only as a result of opposition did security hawks insert an exemption for coffee shops, hotels, and libraries. That's the crumb you get for yelling about it. So, Biden, who was... <laughs> Obama's vice president did not even pretend to support reform, greater accountability, or limits to government surveillance. Fifteen years after Obama flip-flopped, Sullivan, his national security advisor, made it clear that the administration believed that failure to reauthorize Section 702 would be one of the worst intelligence failures of our time. He additionally urged conjures to reauthorize Section 702 without new and operational damaging restrictions on reviewing intelligence and with measures that built on proven reform. That was subtle language. It sent a message to representatives and senators that Biden opposed adding a warrant requirement to protect Americans' privacy rights. Hawkish lawmakers, intelligence officials, and the Biden White House conspired to pass an updated surveillance law that not only avoided meaningful reforms, but also expanded the law in a way that U.S. intelligence agencies could only dream about a year or two ago. For many months, news reports detailed stories of spying abuses and enraged lawmaking. That gave some hope to those in favor of privacy that Congress might rein in government surveillance, yet the national security state stayed the course they once again hid the truth from elected officials, accelerated the process, and fear-mongered, and spread propaganda to escape accountability. So, I mean, par for the course, no? You know? So, yeah. Yeah. ramifications for this aren't here yet, but, you know, keep your eyes on a swivel out there. Don't bring your phone to a protest. That's another good idea. Turn that bitch off and leave it right. somewhere. Well, um, you know, so do something. Well, it depends because, well, I'm not sure, but well, I think even that it depends depending on how, because I went to the pro Palestine protests back in. November and because it was so concentrated, like yeah, I wasn't able to get data for hours. So yeah. I think it just depends on how many people are there and how they are in one space. Like yeah. that, you wouldn't like basically a break, but. That being said, though, yeah, I do kind of agree. Uh-oh. Um, I do kind of agree with what you're saying, though, that the phone can be more a liability than a help. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. But uh, on the plus side, like, you're able to film shit. 
Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can also bring a camera. Those are yeah, also things. Me. You know. But I don't know. Put that thing in airplane mode. Do something. You know? Like there are ways around it. But, you know, I'm sure the stuff we put out doesn't put us on a list. Get us demonetized and things like that. So if you wanna if you wanna support us, you can go to co-v.com slash indie news network. You can get put on a list if you want to. Scan that QR code on your screen, you know. Um uh, put exclamation mark donate in the chat. You know, it's now Colin, it's now your birthday as of seven minutes ago. So happy birthday. And yeah. people Thank go give you. some gifts, you know, to to my boy here. Um like commenting, subscribing. He said he wanted another subscriber um, for his birthday, so go give him one of those. Be, be nice. You know, let us know what you think. Just tell us. Do the, do the hit the buttons. Like, subscribe. You know what to do. Very easy. Um, 